In lecture 24, we're looking at LQG control for systems with multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Now, what we looked at initially in this semester is Bhaskura, or pole placement. The problem with pole placement is that it only works if you have a single input. The question arrives then, what happens if I have multiple inputs? One option is to simply turn off all the inputs but one. A uh, second option is to assume a constant relationship, such as the torque is equal to twice the force. Both are suboptimal. With LQG methods, you can actually use all the inputs that you want. To illustrate that, let's look at the Carton Pendulum system. The dynamics for a Carton Pendulum are as follows. I have the system dynamics, which is unstable. I've got the unstable pole, which is the cart falls over, and a stable pole. I've got a force input. The force is the force on the cart, and a torque. If I have a small motor right here, I can apply a torque on the beam. That gives me two different inputs. If I use full state feedback with two different inputs, I wind up with eight feedback gains. The problem that Bosquare has is I only have four constraints. I have four poles to place in this fourth order system, but eight degrees of freedom. Uh, so again, Bosquare doesn't work if you have multiple inputs. With LQR, you can handle that just fine. In fact, I can sit there and change how each input is used. For example, suppose I have the Q matrix just weighting the output position X, and I have equal weighting on force and torque. If I solve LQR with that Q and that R, I now automatically get eight feedback gains. The first row is the force. It's a function of position, angle, velocity, angular velocity. And the second row is the torque. You can kind of notice with well, LQR, automatically you get inputs for both, or gains for both inputs. I can vary how much control effort goes to each one. If I increase the weighting on force to 1,000, what that means is that in penalizing force very heavily, it's very expensive to use the force. I'd rather use a torque. If I do that, I still wind up with eight feedback gains. The first four gains, however, are very small. I try to minimize the force because it's very expensive. The second four are the torques. I can vary the gains on the torque. If the torque is very expensive, I'll have a high weighting on R. And now what you wind up with is almost all the control efforts on the force. And there is a small non-zero contribution from the torque. So likewise, if you have two different inputs, I can control how much of the control effort goes to the first input or second input just by weighting R. Uh, notice a couple of advantages of L LQR methods. The closed loop system is always stable. That's the property of LQR methods. I'm trying to find the optimal feedback gains. If any set of gains are stabilizing, then the optimal set of gains have to be stabilizing. Second advantage, if you have multiple inputs, you can use any of them or all of them, unlike what we have with Bosquera. And you can adjust how much control effort goes to each input. Uh, the effects of weighting Q. Q penalizes the states. Higher weightings means that state's more expensive. I want to drive it to zero or drive it to steady state as quick as possible. Um, with that, with varying Q and weight varying R, I can sit there and tune the control lot to meet my uh, specifications. So, for example, suppose I want to design a control lot for the cart and pendulum. I want the cart to have a 2% settling time less than 3 seconds, less than 5% overshoot, and keep the angle within 20 degrees, 0.35 radians. To do that using LQR methods, I'd use the following procedure. First, start with R equal to 1, 1. I've got two inputs. I don't really care which one I use. So in this case, let R be 1, 1. I'll weight the position for the output, X, and see what I get. Um, I'll add a gain to make the DC gain 1. And now if my set point is position and 0, you know, I want the angle to be 0, the second column is always times 0, can kind of ignore it. So here's my KR. Take the step response, and what I wind up with is it's too slow. Angle's good, but it's too slow. To speed up the system, increase Q. So if I increase Q to 1,000, I now get higher feedback gains. 
uh, bond KR to make the DZ gain 1. Again, the second column is going to be times 0. I want the angle to always be 0. Take the step response. I now have a faster system. However, the angle is too large, so what I could do is slow down a little bit, or, equivalently, I can now start penalizing angle. Angle is the second state, so I'm going to start increasing the weighting on the second state. If I increase that to 1000, just using trial and error, keep on increasing it until the angle stays less than 0.35 radians, my requirement. I eventually wind up with a new set of feedback gains and a step response that meets the requirement. The angle stays less than 0.35. My settling time is less than 3 seconds. All looks good. Second example. Uh, suppose I want to control an apartment complex. Here I've got six different apartments. I'm going to treat this as a RC filter based on satisfying the heat equation. The top three are exposed to the roof, which is 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The outside walls are exposed to the outside environment at 0 degrees Fahrenheit. And the ground is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's assume the insulation to the ground is R12, R4, R10 between the roof and the ceiling, um, R29 to the walls, R54 to the roof. Put that all together, I wind up with a differential equation. Basically, the heat equation with six states. The six states correspond to the temperature in each of the six rooms. Each one has a heater. And I have a disturbance that's from the sun and the environment and the outside walls. Uh, this is how much heating occurs in each room. Problem is, how do I use all six inputs? Now, one option, if I turn off all the heaters, set U to zero, and see what steady state is, the disturbance warms it up. So this will be the temperature in each room if I do nothing. If I turn on the heater, I can now control it, try to make it 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, suppose I only use the heater in apartment number 5, right here. In that case, this becomes my V matrix. I can use LQR methods to find the feedback gains. And here, Q is just the identity matrix. I care about all, all six apartments. Find the feedback gain, now find the DC gain from the disturbance, or find this yeah, DC gain from the disturbance to the states, with my set point being 70 degrees, and I wind up with the following temperatures. Note that apartment 5 is extremely hot, that's where my heater is, all the other ones are much colder. So that's one option you could have, if I have 6 heaters, just turn 5 of them off. Um, that doesn't work real well in this case because I wind up with one apartment blistering hot, the other ones are cold. A uh, second option is let's just set them all equal to each other. If all five are the same, I'll have my bead matrix just a 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Whatever heat goes to the first apartment is in the second apartment. Find the feedback gains to control the average temperature. And then using Q and R um, to find Kx, find Kr to make the DC gain 1 to the average temperature. Uh, find the DC gain from the Set point is 70 degrees plus the disturbance. I wind up with this being the temperatures. And notice that, let's see, um, again, there's quite a bit of variation in the temperatures. That's because 1 and 4 are receiving heat from the sun. Uh, correction, 1, 2, and 3 are receiving heat, heat from the sun. Actually, cooling from the sun, uh, 4, 5, and 6 are getting a bit more heat from the ground. Option 3. What I could do is I don't have to have the same heat go to every apartment. I could vary it. This is actually what they do in buildings. I try to adjust the heat for each room. So when I command one unit of heat, apartment number 1 and 3 both get 1. Apartment 2 tends to be hot. It only gets 0.4. Apartments 4 and 6 tend to be cold, they get more heat. I try to adjust these to keep everybody at 70. That's, again, a way to use all the different inputs. I'm going to pre-assign the weighting between the, all of them. And if I do it right, I can get all the rooms to go to 70. The problem, however, is if it changes, such as at nighttime when you don't have heating from the sun, 
um, I'm not going to have as much heat coming to one and four, and they're going to be cold. Uh, last option to look at is suppose I had separate heaters for every room. I'll do full state feedback where I have six inputs. Each input has a measurement of all six states and find my six feedback gains. LQR methods will let you find the gains for all six states. What I wind up with is a six by six matrix for KX. This is the heat going to apartment one. The second row is the heat going to apartment two and so on. If I find the DC gain, it's fairly close to one. I want to control the temperature to 70 degrees. Each apartment's right about around 70. That's the advantage of using um, all six inputs separately, something LQR lets me use. The problem, however, is each apartment has to know the temperature of every other apartment. That's not very reasonable. I don't want to run wires from apartment to apartment. I'd like to sit there and say, I want to know the heat on the apartment one, and I don't want to use any information from these other apartments, meaning make those gains zero. What you're trying to do is use LQR methods and constrain some of the gains to be zero. LQR doesn't do that. If you use LQR methods, every, every sensor is going to be used. Every gain, every variable in KX is going to be non-zero. Um, that's a problem with LQR methods. If you want to constrain them to zero, then there is no closed form solution. You have to iterate, and even then I tend to wind up with problems with numerical optimizations. So um, that's some examples of using LQR methods with multiple inputs. Uh, if I have a carton pendulum, I can use the torque and the force. If I have an apartment complex with six different heaters, I can actually use all six different heaters. Um, again, the problem though is you wind up with full state feedback. Every input has to know every state.